All righty. Good morning, everybody. God is good. And all the time. Hey, it's good to see you guys this morning. And um, I would say everybody online, but we're, we're having issues online right now. So tell your friends and that are trying to watch us, they can catch it tomorrow. We'll have it up and going again tomorrow. But we are in a, a little two-week mini-series right now where we are looking at the character and nature of God. And I saw this quote this morning. It was so good. It says this, the more we know about someone, the more confidence we can have in their character. Isn't that true? The more you get to know someone, the more confidence you can have in their character. So can you see why it's so important that we really get to know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Amen? And Jesus tells us, you know, about discipleship and followers of him. Remember, if you're a disciple, you're you're a follower of somebody. So if you're a disciple of Christ, that means you're a follower of, of Jesus, right? So Jesus turns to his followers, his disciples, and he says that to them. And he, but remember, this speaks to us too. This is Luke 9, 23. Jesus says to us today, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. But whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. So to carry your cross, Jesus says, take up your cross. Well, what does that mean? That means, I'll just summarize, it means quite a few things, but the, the basic things is that, that you put God first in your life and you follow his commandments in the word and apply it to your life. You're taking up the cross to follow God no matter what, amen? So we are growing and our understanding of God because as you grow, as you know, you'll know how to follow him closely. Right? We know that God the Father, we know that God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, right? The trifecta, all working together on our behalf so we can follow, follow God closely. Right? Today we're going to look at the Father and the Son and their relationship with each other. And then we're going to take a look at our relationship with the Father and Son. And we're going to see how this all works together. I'm super excited about today's message. But first, there was a group of religious people, meaning they knew scripture, but they didn't know God, right? And Jesus shows up and they say, Jesus, we want to know who your father is. And check out Jesus' response to them. He says, then he said to him, where, or then they said to him, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know, neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And John 14, 7 If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and you have seen him. This blows their mind, right? Have you read something? Okay, this this messes with their mind right now because up to this point, these religious people that were serving at the temple, the church, they only knew about God. They've only read about God. And now God shows up and he begins to tell them about who the father is. And this messes with their thinking. Remember, they, they wanted to stone Jesus. They didn't believe Jesus, right, was God's son, right? So they didn't understand, mess with them. But it's amazing to us, how, if you read scripture, Jesus is all about revealing who the father is to us, okay? Um, take a look at Jesus here. He says in uh, John chapter 5, verse 39, he says, you search the scriptures because... You think they they give you eternal life, but the scriptures, they point to me. They point to me. It's amazing. Jesus turns to one of his disciples, one of his followers, because he wasn't getting it. Have you ever felt like, man, I just don't get it. Lord, help me. One of his own followers didn't get it. So Jesus looks at him in John 14 and says, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the father. So how can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work, right? It's a powerful, right? It's amazing that Jesus shows us who the Father is in this little context of scripture. You see, everything Jesus did in his life, everywhere you read about where Jesus went, he was constantly in the business of showing the Father's heart towards other people. That's why Jesus came. Sometimes you think he came for salvation. He came, that's a part of it. He came, right, to release the kingdom, but also to show who the Father is because they didn't know the Father. There was no relationship. There was only religion. 
You see, I follow the word of God in my life, out of my relationship and obedience for my love for Jesus, right? Jesus says, if you love me, you'll follow my commandments. So here Jesus is, he shows up on the scene and he begins to reflect the father's love everywhere Jesus went. He was always about doing the father's business, right? But we know Jesus also disapproved of any attitude that would reduce respect or obedience to the father's revealed word, which is scripture. Take a look at this. Move page. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Jesus says, don't misunderstand why I, have, why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the, the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Amen? All right. So what we see in this text is Jesus is linking his disciples' love to him. If you love me, you'll follow the commandments. But here's the other deal. While you do that, you're also showing the Father that you love him. You love me, you follow the commandments, but you're also showing that you love the Father. And we know that knowledge is very important, right? You need to have knowledge, understanding of the truth, but it doesn't stop there. We have to have a relationship. What is a relationship with the father? That means you talk to your father. He talks back and you listen, right? There's a relationship piece that's so important here between Jesus and the father that's modeled to us. Look at John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, right? So Jesus came so we could have a personal relationship with the Father, your very own relationship. Listen, you can't get into heaven off Pastor Terry's relationship. You can't slide into heaven off Grandma's relationship, right? Even those are powerful examples of, 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 your, of your family life. And maybe you didn't even grow up with, with uh, in a Christian family. That doesn't matter because what matters is that you have a relationship of your own with the Father. Amen? Super important. Okay. Now, we follow Jesus. Why? Because Jesus' steps lead us right to the Father. As you respond to Jesus, you're actually responding to the leading of the Father. Now, sometimes following Jesus can be uncomfortable. Have you ever done what was right according to the word and it was uncomfortable for you or for others, right? Take a look at, look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10. For our heavenly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they knew how. I love that part right there because I, I love my dad. There's, you know, ever been raised by mom, your dad and mom and things weren't perfect, right? But listen, Jesus says, for our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best that they knew. How? But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. Share in his holiness. So good, right? God tells you to be holy as he is holy. You know that God won't tell you to do something without equipping you with the power to do it. Amen? But pastor, I keep struggling in this area. God's going to equip you to get through that, right? Look at John 15. It says, I am the true grapevine and the father is the gardener. Did you know that the father is the gardener? This is Jesus describing his, the father. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do not bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Amen. So what is fruit? Fruit is evidence of your life that you have a relationship with the Father, right? Relationship, fruit is physical evidence. And did you see that? Jesus called the Father the gardener, the gardener. Do you know when you get pruned? Like I have a rose bush and I had this branch earlier and it was healthy, it was strong. And roses were coming off this branch, but the branch was going sideways. Got my rose bush going this way, right? Looking good, but I had one branch getting squirrely. So I had to get over there and I knew I needed to cut it because it was taking energy from the plant, right? So I trimmed that. It looked healthy, but it needed to be pruned, right? We have things in our life at times that can even look healthy, 
But if you're okay with the father doing a little pruning on you, and what that means is he looks at Terry and goes, Terry, you know that thing in your life that's not quite right, your lack of patience or this or that, I'm gonna snip that, ooh, that didn't feel so good. But I trust my father. And he reaches over and he changes this, snips this in my life, right? Because we trust the father. Jesus is saying you can trust the gardener, the father in your life. He's pruning things because we know what happens. When you prune things in your life, you get stronger spiritually, right? So we have to trust a good father. We sing that song, good, good father, where you can trust the father because he's the one that does a pruning. You know, um, we, uh, if I was online, it was funny because people uh, that, that follow us online, they don't, quite get, they don't quite get Oklahoma wind, right? When Tanya and I first moved here at, at 20 years old, we didn't understand what a real storm was. Right? We actually grabbed our son and got in the bed because we heard lightning and thunder, but it sounded like someone was shaking like a metal sheet over our house, and we didn't know what was happening. We knew earthquakes, and it's a lot worse here. I'd rather deal with an earthquake than what we had here in Oklahoma, but the winds are strong, right? And what happens is we know when the winds are blowing really strong in Oklahoma, right? I have a lot of trees around our property. I know what I'm going to be picking up the next morning. Right, And I load up and I call Chuck Swisher, can I drop off these dead branches at your property? He says, bring them out to my burn pile. So I load up all these branches and we drive them out to his property and I burn them. Right? Those branches are the weak, fell branches right, that were dying off because they weren't staying connected to the source of the tree. The vine. Jesus is saying, if you stay connected to me, when the strong winds blow in your life, because we all have winds that pick up pace in our life, when those strong winds blow, you won't be falling on the ground because you're growing strong connected to the vine. Amen? Amen? That's why you have to let the gardener prune, right? Because sometimes the branches start growing in places they're not supposed to grow and they slow you down spiritually. Can you trust the Father to prune in your life? Amen? Someone asked me, uh, that used to go to church here, long, that's about four years ago, I think, and they said, uh, they caught me after church, and, they, and they, 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 it wasn't the Lion of Judah, but it was, song, it was a song like the Lion of Judah, where we were worshiping and praising Jesus for, his, for, for who he is, and they caught me after church, and they go, why do you uh, sing songs to Jesus and not to God? And this, at first, it stumped me. It confused me, because I thought everybody knew Jesus is also God. Right, but then I realized they, 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 this person only recognized Jesus as like a prophet, which is there's some religions out there, and, and they, they recognize Jesus as a prophet, someone really good in the Bible, but Jesus wasn't God's son and he's not God. And I, my heart hurt because in that moment, I knew they weren't connected to real life, they knew about the Father, they knew a little bit about a, who they thought a prophet was, but they were not connected. Remember, no one gets to the Father except through the son. And my heart hurt for them because this guy had religion and he left the church and I didn't want, I wanted him to stay connected, just press through, but he just believed a lie in his heart from a long time ago, apparently, and he, and he left. But we can't do anything outside going through Jesus to get to the father, amen? Um, look at John five twenty two. It says, moreover, the father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the son that all may honor the son just as they honor the father. Whoever does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. So when we honor Jesus in worship, we're honoring the father. And when we honor the father in worship, if we're singing a song like good with father, we're honoring Jesus. Are we understanding? We don't differentiate, differentiate between the three. We honor, when you honor the Holy Spirit, you honor the Father. We are honoring all three because all three are God working on behalf of our benefit, amen, so we can serve him. All right, so what does God want for our lives? If you're taking notes, some of you are note takers. Number one, if you, here's one of the things that, one of the things that God wants for our life and a question, I guess I put it in question format, does God want you to have a rich and satisfying life? Does he want you to have that? Okay, take a look at, take a look at John 10.10. 10. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy, but check out, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That's really good, because there is a poverty mindset to this scripture. A poverty mindset is, I've got to be super poor, right, because I follow Jesus and I gotta give everything away, and God wants you to bless the poor and help others, but that's an that's a, a incorrect way to look at scripture. 
I don't follow Jesus to get rich. That's just a benefit of being a one of his one of his kids. Amen. Right? Rich in life, not maybe rich financially, but rich with his goodness and joy and love in my life. Right? So one of the purposes that Jesus came is for you to have a rich and satisfying life. Even from the very beginning, open up Genesis. Right? In the book of Genesis, when God finished making the earth, what did he say? He said, it is good. And God's definition as good is not average. Good means it can't get any better. Right? And then he turns to Adam and he tells Adam, I want you to take dominion over everything good that I made for you. That means Adam can, for you vegan people, Adam had permission to kill and eat. Okay, it's biblical, right? But Adam had, was supposed to take dominion because our good father from the beginning until Satan shows up on the scene and kind of messed things up for Adam and Eve, right? But Jesus shows up on the scene later and he begins to restore that right relationship back to the Father for us. And that's good news for us. So number two, if you're taking notes, it's this. It's the relationship. The relationship. You see, the intimate relationship between the Father and the Son provides the model relationship between the shepherd and his sheep. Right? Shepherd and his sheep. See, we are in close walk with the shepherd because if you, I've said this before, but it is so true. If you were to go up and see a, a bunch of sheep in a field and you called their name, they would not respond to you. Sheep aren't the smartest, but they have one thing. They know the voice of their true shepherd. So if, if Eric was actually their shepherd that took care of them all the time, if Eric called them, they would come right to Eric and I'd be standing over there calling and whistling and they would not come. We follow the shepherd's voice because we can trust him. Jesus follows the father just like, so there's this relationship model that's taking place between the father and his son and his son and us. One big family all working together. Now John 10 gives us clear revelation of the most important relationship to ever exist. That's between Jesus and the father. Take a look at John 10 verse 14. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and my own sheep know me. In the same way, the father knows me and I know the father. I put the sheep before myself, sacrificing myself if necessary. You need to know that I have other sheep in addition to those in this pen. Meaning, we aren't the only place that God's doing something amazing, amen? In Cambodia, in California, and other places, God's doing a good thing right now, right? I need to gather and bring them too. They'll also recognize my voice. Then it will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the father loves me. I love that part because I freely laid down my life. I love that Jesus recognizes the father's love for him. This is why my father loves me, right? My father loves me. It's super important in the second why we understand we have to receive the love of the father. You see, Jesus relies on his father. He can do nothing on his own. When you see Jesus, you see the Father. This is good. Jesus imitates the Father. There's something powerful when you imitate God in your life. When you imitate God in your life, there's, a, there's an exchange taking place, this relationship exchange showing your faith and trust in a good Father, right? Look at Jesus, he even says this. It's really simple, this. I like this short little scripture. It's John 5, 20. For the Father loves the Son. I'm not going to beat him around the bush. Jesus says the father loves me. (laughs) That's awesome. And this is where Jesus' security comes from. And it's super important we understand that Jesus' security, he understands it comes from the father. Right? Because listen, if you think your love comes from someone else, humans will always let you down. And I've been, have you ever been guilty of that? Your love, you gave your, this type of intimate love that's only designed for the father. You gave it to your boss, a spouse, or someone else. You, you put them on a, we say pedestal. We put them above the father's love when the reality it is, is Jesus recognized that the love, this, this love that can't be challenged or broken only comes with the father. I won't look for it anywhere else. And that's what the Lord has put on my heart as I put this message. He wants us, the Father wants us to know that his love for us is rich and deep. And he wants us to look for it from nowhere else, only from him. Everywhere else, even I will let Tanya, when we first got married and she looked to me and I would say, babe, I'm a bad Jesus. Because I knew I would fail and let her down. And she soon quickly realized, yes, that was true, right? And that's why she developed her own close walk with the Lord, super close. 
right? If you know my wife, you know that's the truth, right? So Jesus, I love this, that it's um, Jesus and the Father, they're in the same business. Do you know that the, the Lord has a business and his business is good, right? It's about redeeming people. It's about seeing his own Christians get saved and set free of things in their life that don't belong in a person's life, right? So business is good. Jesus came to do the Father's business and what's the Father's business? Releasing the kingdom. You see, when you read scripture, more than anything else, Jesus was always talking about the kingdom of God coming down on earth. You don't have to wait to walk in the kingdom of heaven. You can pray for the kingdom of heaven to come down in your situation that we call that a miracle, right? You can pull down and pray down kingdom values that are up in heaven. No sickness, no striving, no division, right? You can pray those things down now in situations that aren't healthy and the kingdom of God can show up and heal things. You know, you may have something right now that looks dead and gone in your, in your life, in your own home or at work. God can, res- he's really good about restoring things, right? He's really good about restoring things, right? So anyways, God is so good. You can trust him. He's in the business. Look at John 5, verse 21. For just as a father gives life to those he raises from the dead, so the son gives life to everyone he wants. He's not talking about just salvation, it's talking about real life and real freedom in people's lives. You know, Jesus never performed a miracle on his own, right? Even when Jesus got righteously angry, remember he went in the temple and he flipped over the tables. You know why he did that? Because things were out of spiritual order in the church, the temple, right? Do you know that Jesus wasn't doing that on his own? Remember he says, I do nothing on my own. The father put that in Jesus' heart. Now go do that, son. Things are out of order in that church because ain't no perfect church. Jesus shows up, right, and he flips tables under the direction of the Father. When Jesus healed, right, the blind person, because the Father wanted him to, when Jesus let the kingdom go, remember the lady snuck behind him and just, the lady that had been bleeding for 12 years, she would broke, paying for doctors to heal her body. She just touched the hem of his garment, right? The kingdom of God came out of Jesus. That was the Father moving through Jesus to heal her. Sometimes we have failed to see the father for who he is, but you have a good father that you can trust that loves you. He wants you to touch him, reach out and touch him. You can trust him, right? I know this is hard because sometimes not all of us grew up in a family where my father was good. Maybe he was abusive or harsh or angry. So when I say the word father, you can trust the father. Sometimes our minds They can't really come up with that concept because the only concept you have of a good father was of a bad father that you knew. It's a trick of the devil. He loves to keep Christians away from that close walk with the father based off their earthly father's experience. That's a lie. I believe the father's speaking to all of us today to reconnect. What's been on my heart, even praying this morning, Lord, reconnect us back to you, Father. We, get the, we understand Jesus, we connect to Jesus. But God wants us to also connect to the Father, to, back to his heart. His, his, he loves you, you can trust him, amen? So Jesus never did any miracle on his own. We also know, look at Jesus didn't own a house. He didn't even own a horse, he borrowed a donkey. Didn't have a big screen TV, right? Every bit of money in ministry Jesus gave to the poor. Right? You see, the, he came to do one thing, and that's reveal the Father to us. That's what Jesus came. Sometimes we, we have you ever had this thought, man, I just got to, the temptation of this earth is to accumulate more things, then you'll have peace. That's a lie. Jesus knew if he just stayed connected to the Father, he can have peace even in the middle of storms. That's why he often modeled to us when things got stressful. Remember, it was stressful for Jesus knowing what was about to happen on the cross. He walked away from the disciples and he went and prayed to the Father. He was modeling for us when we get stressed out, we don't go to you know, Netflix and binge on 12 shows. We don't go eat tons of, we go connect to the Father. Jesus was modeling us, you can trust the Father, right? So good. As Jesus reflected the Father, the disciples, they were supposed to see that in Jesus and reflect that to other people. You see, Jesus died for the Father's will to be done. Remember, all the disciples, all but one, died for the cause of the Christ, which was also the cause of the Father. 
Think about this. For three years, they lived together with Jesus. He showed them everything he did, how to pray to the Father. They saw him minister. They they, they watched how Jesus handled people that don't like him. (laughs) Right? So they knew Jesus really well. That's why it's so important to know someone really well, you'll do anything for them. Right? These disciples gave their lives up, right? Because they knew Jesus really well. The Father wants us to know him really well too. Right? So the, we know that God is uh, in the business of restoring. I would say, so Jesus came to reveal the Father. We also know Jesus came to an orphan planet. Think about this. He came to an orphan planet to lead people back to the true Father. People were orphans. We were orphans. Someone that doesn't have a relationship with the Lord is really spiritually an orphan. That's why our heart should hurt for them, you know, and we should pray for them to to have a revelation of the goodness of the Father in them, right? Our Father loves to forgive and restore, right? Our Father is better than we think. Think about this. Our Father is way better than we think, so we have to allow him to change our thinker. When's the last time you said, Father, would you help me see you differently than how I can only see you by my human perspective. So ask the father, it should be one of your prayer things this week. Our challenge is ask the father to help you see him differently at a, at new levels, how you've seen him right now. Amen. All right. So the kingdom of God is a family run business and we don't see the, if we don't see the father and the son and the Holy spirit as the leaders in the business, we've actually disconnected ourselves from a lifestyle of kingdom, right? We have to recognize those three are all the Godhead working together, each their own individual responsibilities, but they all are in each other working together for our behalf. So we know that Jesus came to reveal the the Father's business. We see in John chapter 20, here's verse 21. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Wow, so good. Are you catching this? This is a huge moment where Jesus breathes on the disciples and he tells them to receive the Holy Spirit, right? He tells them, now I was sent for a specific purpose. My job is now I'm passing this job on to you. Your job's to go reveal the Father, You have a big job. You have a job to go reveal the Father. And Jesus isn't telling you to do it on your own. He says, I'm breathing on you. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit to give you the power and strength, right, to reveal the Father to other people. Powerful stuff, right? So all Christians are part of the family. And Jesus is saying, as family members, you have certain responsibilities, right? I know we're raising three boys, right? They all had three responsibilities. Garrett was a little older, so he got to do the dishes first. We, we showed Cody, probably about eight years old, how to do the laundry. Darks and whites. Houston had his own responsibilities of cleaning up after the dog we had. They all had family responsibilities. As a follower of Christ, you have a, a responsibility. You're included in the family. As family members of the kingdom, we have a responsibility to reveal the Father to other people. And you're not being asked to do it on your own. The Holy Spirit is equipping you to reflect the Father. So good. And take a look at this amazing prayer. Now, Pastor Tongi says this, and I hope he continues to do it. He often, before we close, he speaks this prayer. It's a scripture over us, right? Because take a look at Psalm 67. It says, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations, right? So good. Listen, I think there's a lot of, non-Christians that are confused about the graciousness and goodness of the Father. They're confused. They see a tornado that hurts people and they go, oh man, the Father, man, your God's mean. They see a virus come in and hurt people. Man, your God's mean. They don't know the Father, right? We take something that the devil's hands are messing with and we try to, we pin it on the Father, right? We, 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 we fail to, to give credit to the Father at times. Think about the ocean, right? Think about the mountains. Think about the flowers that come, the trees, all amazing things that the father created, right? So non-Christians, right? They have a bad concept of who the father is. Our job is to give them a right concept of love, peace, joy by how you, by how you treat them. See, when you do things biblically, your, your actions, you're actually representing the father, right? And the people will see the father. And what happens, they want what you have, 
Well, how come you're so peaceful in the middle of the storm? Well, I'm, you can go super religious and go, hey, well, I'm connected to the vine. They won't know what that is. <laughs> but you can't say, can I tell you about Jesus? Because I can't do this on my own. I really don't like that person, but God's given me, God gives me love to overcome my feelings. And that's how I can love people through kingdom love, kingdom love. So here's, a, here's a, maybe a prayer that you can jot down this week is, is ask Jesus to show you one way that you aren't already doing, one way, one more way to reveal the Father to others. Lord, would you show me one way to reveal the Father to others? Right, There's a, that prayer is so good. I wanna read it just one more time. God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all the nations. I, I will say this as I get ready to close. Do you know that one of the most selfish things the church, the capital C church has done, right? right? In the name of humility is they've stopped pursuing blessings. They call it humility. You know, there's been studies done, some of you grandparents and parents, you know what happens, have you seen those little videos posted on Instagram or YouTube? I've, I watched a couple, I was cracking up, but it's so true. Studies have been shown when parents or grandparents, they make all the little baby faces to a child, right? The child begins to laugh and crack up, laugh, right? All the child is doing is, is, doing is reflecting what he sees. What research says that it's stimulated a part of his brain, right, that stimulates joy. I think part of the issue is this, is we fail to really receive the Father's love over us, and I believe that's how I want to end is, would you just allow the Father, as you move forward today and the rest of your week, would you just allow, would you receive his love over you? Because as you receive it, as you see his love over you, right, as you picture his face shining down, he loves you, He's not mad at you, waiting to catch you do something mad or bad, right? He absolutely loves you. And as you see his face over you, you begin to reflect that to other people. Amen. God is so good like that. I wrote this down. It says, uh, you know, we know that in Nehemiah, Nehemiah says this. He's had a really hard task. It's been a long road for Nehemiah. And he says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Real simple, the joy of the Lord is Nehemiah's strength. You know, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It doesn't matter what others do. I wrote this down. I don't know if you have this, Maddie. Is It doesn't matter what others do because my joy and strength comes from you. If you'll say this every morning, you won't get let down. Remember, your love and joy doesn't come from a human. It comes from the Father. It doesn't matter what others do because my joy and strength comes from you. And aren't you thankful that the Father has joy and strength for you? So you don't have to roll out of bed wondering, is it going to be a good day or a bad day today? Have you ever done? I've done that. You just have to remind yourself like Nehemiah did, today's the joy of the Lord is my strength. The Father wants to change how we receive his love in our lives. And as you see him smiling and laughing and making Father sounds at you, you're going to receive that joy and then you're going to give that away. Would you close your eyes as, as we pray? You can trust the Father. He's a good Father in your life. As the Father sent Jesus, Jesus now sends you to reveal the Father to others. So, look, Father, we ask that you would reveal more of yourself to us as we go on this week, that we would know you deeply in ways that we've never known you before. Father, will you open our eyes so we can see you joyfully smiling down over us. So I just want you to picture for a second is, would you just picture the father, he's smiling at you right now and he's wanting you right now to receive his joy. Would you just let him put his arms around you and hug you? When's the last time you've, let the, you've, you've allowed the father to hug you? So father, would you just hug every person here right now? We give you permission to hug us. We receive your joy. So just fill this place with your, your joy and your peace and your love. We, we receive it and we love you so much. If you're here today and you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you can do that right now. If you've never asked Jesus, and I just want to give you an opportunity. This is between you and the Father. Eyes are closed. And if you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, 
just slip your hand up and say, yes, pastor, today I want to do that right now. Anyone today, you want to ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life? Anyone today? Father, we just thank you for your goodness. I thank you for every person here that you've called to be a part of Lifeway, what you're doing here. I pray blessings over them. I pray for those that couldn't make it today, that are having to watch online later, Lord, that you would just bless them and guide them to receive your love. Father, we just thank you so much for that you're concerned about every little detail in our life. So we just trust you. You are the good father. So we come approaching you every day with all our cares and all our worries and all our hopes and dreams. We trust you. Forgive us for the times that we put trust in other things that can't provide joy in relationship like you have. Lord, we just turn to you. In your name we pray. Amen.